Proverbs 30, 32 says, if thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, if thou has thought evil, lay thine hand upon thy mouth. So that scripture is saying, if you lift up yourself, you're thinking evil. It says, put your hand on your mouth. He says, if you start to think and speak foolishly, just, just put your hand on your mouth because you, you're setting yourself up at that point. Now, you, uh, the scripture says those that are, are, are uh, exalted themselves shall be abased, shall be humbled. So as soon as you do that, now you're saying, humble me. <laughs> we don't want to deal with that. We hate that. It'd be hurting bad. You know, you know, all of us have been in some embarrassing situations. I, I, and actually, the reason I was able to tell my son what I told him, because when I was coming up, my game would get good. I just, I just was like, oh, they can't do nothing with me and would snap my ankle. <laughs> so overconfidence is a, is a roadblock to, uh, is a roadblock to, to receiving your help. And then the other thing is manipulation and control. The scripture says, look on another man, not on your own thing. So sometimes we're so, we want to be in control. So it's hard, hard for us to embrace the responsibility and accountability of, 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 of involving ourselves in relationships with others. You know, it says esteem others better than yourselves. See, but if I'm so busy trying to control me and what I want, I'm not trying to esteem nobody. I'm not thinking about nobody. I just want my thing. Uh, and so now it's hard for us to engage relationships. We, you know, we talk about different teams. Uh, and, and actually, as we grow in ministry, a lot of times I watch who has participated in sports, who has been in the armed services, uh, you know, who has been a part of big management teams and stuff like that. I can tell who's, who's uh, had been in a family with more than one person. Why? The person that's been the only child never had to share. So they're not evil. They just never had to consider nobody else. And guess what? They was used to being catered to, not just by mom and dad, but by Uncle Jimmy, Aunt Betty, Grandma, everybody, because they're, 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 they're the golden child. They're the only child. You know, so everybody, they're used to people serving them. Or if, let's say, you know, things separated and you ended up being, you know, the, or let's say you were the firstborn and the, the next child is not to 10, 15 years later. Same syndrome. You never had to really share. By the time it's time to share, you know, moved on to school and stuff like that. Well, then uh, people that's never been a part of a corporate team or have been freelance, they never had to think about nobody else. So they never had to be accountable and responsible because they flow on the, they go when they go or, or do stuff when they feel like it. Right? If you've never played for a sports team, you know, now it's, now it's, a, it's a totally different thing if you're playing golf or you're playing basketball. Golf, you depend on you. Basketball, you actually have to win. You know, you know I, I remember us going through the regionals and, and the sectionals. And, you know, you got, the, you, know, you got the 32, you got the 16, you got the 8, and you got the final four. All of us didn't get along. All of us didn't hang out. Because we all had different personalities. But we won together. But it taught to how to be a part of a team. And so, so, and that's something, you know, that's something that we have to learn, how to be a part of a team. You ever notice, like, you, when you get close to certain people or you think you be involved with a certain team, you either find something wrong or find a way out. Because it get uncomfortable. Because now somebody's going, why would you do that? See, when you was on your own, ain't nobody asking no questions. Or somebody goes, well, you know, that, that was very offensive. All you got to do, what, is make the adjustment. But instead of that, it's like, well, let me get away because they noticed the flaw. <laughs> so what? <laughs> We're growing. See, one thing about being a part of a team is, is you have to grow. But it's hard for people to do that because they, they want to be in control. They, and they want to draw people into their, their own world as opposed to advancing out and harmonizing with others. Let me give you a scripture here, which, I, which is interesting. Uh, I'm going to give you two versions because you may just think this is just for women um, because of how it's expressed. But uh, Proverbs 14.1, it says, Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. So what it's saying is the person that's wise is always building with their, their purpose. 
But, but the fool tries to grab control of it with their hands. The person that tries to control the building of that house, that's the fool. Now, I'll give you another version because you think this is just for women. So uh, the message version says this. It says, Lady Wisdom builds a lovely home. It says, Sir Fool comes along and tears it down brick by brick. So basically what it's saying is the person operating in wisdom. See, again, in the, in, 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 uh, there's wisdom in a multitude of counsel. The person that's operating in wisdom is constantly building. But that fool, that person that wants to control it, remember, with their hands, is, is, is blowing the thing up. But they, the whole, the, look, look, the very thing that they're trying to protect, they're losing. Like Job 3.25 says, the thing that I greatly fear has come upon me. Right, so we have to stay away from that uh, manipulation and control. And then watch the relationships. You know, you, which you, you're trying to, you want help. But you don't want to, uh, you don't, you yield it to help but not control. It's a difference. See, so help is like this. So me and my wife, we're in a relationship and my wife helps me tremendously. My wife doesn't control me. So I help her, but I don't control her. So how does that look? We offer considerations. So she says, well, honey, you might not have considered this, you might not consider that, but I'm offering this to you. So now I still have choice as opposed to you need to be doing this and you need to do it now. Okay, well, now you're not giving me choice. You're not helping me. You want me to do what you want. I have a vision, and you're offering considerations that could enhance, help, or make it easier for me. Manipulative relationships uh, uh, almost try to puppetize you. So you want to, you, you, you know, you have to use discernment and watch that. That person will treat you like, a, like an object. It's always a means to an end for them. It's not just for you. You know, like the other day we came out of a restaurant, you gave that, I guess your gift card or something to the person. That, well, you may never see that person again. So that wasn't, that couldn't have been manipulation because there was no, there was no benefit to you. So we pay for their meal. We don't know the people from for Adam. Why? So, so again, it wasn't a means to an end. It wasn't a hustle. What happens is you, you, you'll gauge that person if they're helping you and they get frustrated. So why are they frustrated? Because what you're doing is not fitting into their plans. That's manipulative. So you should still, if somebody's trying to help you, and you go, ah, oh, well, yeah, I appreciate y'all, but I'm thinking I'm going to do something else. Okay, well, cool. Well, hey, if you just need me, let me know. Oh, so what? You, you don't want to roll with me now? I thought you was helping. <laughs> help me out now. Which one is it? You know, so if you don't, but see, they have, a, they, they have an ulterior motive. And so you, that's when you, that, that frustration will start to rear its ugly head. Uh, that that manipula manipulative person thinks the way they see things is right, period. And anything else frustrates them because you, because you don't think see things their way. So the manipulative relationship is different than covenant relationships. That's a relationship where people are willing to, willing to connect despite their differences. And God is always at the center of that relationship. All right? I, 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 uh, this, some, this is an excerpt of something I wrote. It really was about uh, when I was in ministry school, had to write a paper on cults. And, uh, but I customized it for us. Watch out for these counterfeit relationships. Counterfeit relationships are similar to cults. They seem to meet a need and forfeit a need at the same time. So the need that they seem to meet is the acceptance, the belonging, the friendship, identity, teamwork, tradition, spirituality, responsibility, and accountability. But the re reason that it seems like it forfeits the same at attributes because you may gain success, but you, you don't sense fulfillment. And that's the tough, like, like you know, the difference between a, 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 a great atmosphere where you're growing, like a, like a good church is you're constantly being fulfilled. Uh, in, in a cult situation, you, you're, there's temporary success, but you're missing something. You're missing your fulfillment. And that's how it is with manipulative relationships. Like you may have a little temporary success, but something is missing. You're not being fulfilled. Um, you want to be in relationships that, that, that will be fulfilling. Uh, I want to give you this uh, a watch, uh, a major roadblock to 
uh, to um, help is you got to win over your worries. Win over your worries. Scripture says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not tell thy own understanding, and all, all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So even in your relationships as you continue to grow and people are coming to help, start with the peace of God. The peace of God will let you know, go in this direction. Don't don't just uh, I don't just keep get pulled like a puppet. Sure. We're, see, we want to stay in control because we're worried about being hurt again and things of that nature. And the initial hurt, and even sometimes the present hurt, is just a lack of obedience in, in following what God's telling us to do. But as long as we follow what God's telling us to do, God won't put us in a position where we'll have to deal with that. So we so God wants us to go deeper in Him. Uh, in this ever-changing process. So he's constantly getting us to go deeper, deeper in our relationships, deeper in our beliefs. Each time we master a relationship, a level, there's another level coming that will require more of our heart and immobilize more of our fear. So each time we get to a level and we master that level in, in, in relationships, because each level we go to on purpose, there's more purpose people that we're connected to because it's all about the kingdom fitly being joined in, in God's kingdom. So God's not moving on just a person. He's moving on a people. So we, we think it's all about us. But every time we go to a level, at that level, there's connections. And then we elevate to another level. At that level, it's connections. And, and if, you, if you just look at the whole picture, all the connections are connecting for a reason. And this is the key. Our peace in the midst of challenges are gauged to measure our ability to go deeper. What that means is, can we relinquish more control of God? So our peace in the midst of challenge. When challenge comes, yeah, when challenge comes, just like when um, like we were talking about uh, uh, when persecution and stuff comes, that's our gauge. Like if we have peace in the midst of that storm, you know, remember Paul said I was pressed on every side, you know, yet not distressed, persecuted, not forsaken, you know, cast down, uh, not destroyed. You know, he's, he broke all those things down. What he was saying is, I'm with God. I have peace. I'm with God. So that's saying I'm relinquishing more of my control. God got this. So when they was on the sea and a storm came, that was their gaze to see what they're going to trust God in the midst of that storm. Right? So that's the same thing with us. Our, our, our lives have been challenged with distrust and pain, which sometimes has facilitated a, a, a panic room and made us run from doing the uncomfortable. Going deeper would be similar to going further out in the ocean away from the safe shore. That's what going deeper would be. Um, the further you go out, the less you are in control and the more you need to trust God. So remember when he told them, and I think Luke 2, launch out into the deep again. Uh, so the path to your healing and being able to now merge into the relationships, because what's causing the relationships to merge, a lot of times we're not healed. So every time some, something gets close to us, it rubs us the wrong way, and, and we have a negative reaction. So, so as we were growing in the relationship, we both had to be healed. So, I, I mean, it might be as, as simple as, well, uh, could you buy me this? Could you buy me that? And then I'm buying stuff. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said to myself, she ain't saying nothing. I was like, let me back off because, you know, I don't want her to take advantage of me. Based on what? She had never taken advantage of me. It was I hadn't been healed in that area. And I didn't realize until she got closer. And the same thing, as I got closer, like, oh, okay, wait a minute. Let me see. Good to be true. There's a catch. There's a catch with that guy from Jersey. Right. And forgiveness is our road to really not really merging in the relationships that we want. Why? Because you know what healing is? What forgiveness is? Forgiveness is launching out into the deep waters of love. That's what forgiveness is. I'm launching out into the deep waters of love. I got a love at a whole nother level um, that I've never done before. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll end there. Any thoughts? Uh, what did you say? <laughs>